TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu emphasizes Jerusalem's resolve to devastate the terror infrastructure in the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip amid ongoing barrages of indiscriminate rocket fire directed at Israel's civilian communities. Domestic violence across Israel persists, with riots reported in multiple cities and towns. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken reveals that Washington is working behind the scenes in an effort to de-escalate the situation between Israel and Hamas. Palestinian Islamists continue to pound on Israeli towns and cities with roughly 350 rockets fired over the course of the past 36 hours alone, raising the total number of projectiles indiscriminately launched from the Hamas-controlled territory toward Israel's civilian communities to approximately 3,800 and counting. With that being said, it is important to know that over 550 rockets were classified as failed launches in light of the fact that they exploded within the Palestinian enclave, some of which reportedly landed in populated areas, causing both civilian injuries and damage. Separately, it has been cleared for publication that the two civilians that were killed in yesterday's deliberate rocket fire on an Israeli community in the Ishkol Regional Council are Thai nationals. Their respective families in Thailand have been informed of the devastating news. And while the civilian death toll is rising, Jerusalem is resolved to degrade the terror infrastructure throughout the Gaza Strip to ensure that once a ceasefire is enforced, the Islamist organizations in the Hamas-controlled territory will think twice before forcing Israel into another conflict. אני פה בבסיס חיל האוויר בחצרים, קודם לכן במטה פיקוד דרום בבאר שבע. קיבלתי סקירות על התקיפות הרבות שלנו נגד החמאס והג'יהאד האיסלאמי. הם קיבלו מכות שהם לא ציפו להם, ואין לי ספק שהחזרנו אותם שנים רבות אחורה. אני מקיים מערכות מצב, מקבלים החלטות. אנחנו נמשיך ככל שיידרש כדי להשיב את השקט לכל אזרחי ישראל. ודבר נוסף, אני בטוח ש... כל האוהבים שלנו מסביב רואים איזה מחיר אנחנו גובים על התוקפנות נגדנו, ואני בטוח שגם הם יפיקו את הלקח. As decided by Jerusalem's political leadership, the IDF continues to target Hamas and Islamic Jihad infrastructure and operatives across the Gaza Strip, including rocket launching cells, military compounds, weapons caches, and the so-called Hamas Metro, which is a network of subterranean passageways and storage units. And in contrast to the indiscriminate rockets deliberately fired by the Palestinian militants toward Israeli civilian communities, the Israeli Air Force, or IAF, has provided TV7 with a rare glimpse into operational activity over the Hamas-controlled territory, purporting to show the extraordinary effort to avoid civilian casualties. <laughs> Despite Israeli efforts to avoid civilian casualties, regrettably, Gazan medical officials claim that 219 Palestinians have been killed since fighting flared on May the 10th when the Iranian proxy Palestinian Islamic Jihad indiscriminately launched seven rockets toward Jerusalem. It is worth mentioning, however, that Gaza medical officials are employed by the Islamist Hamas organization, therefore TV7 cannot validate its accuracy. 
Meanwhile, amid the ongoing conflict on Israel's southern front with Islamist organizations in the Gaza Strip, Israeli Arabs and Palestinians in both the West Bank and Israel have held a day of rage during which hundreds of riots have been reported. It is crucial to highlight that these riots have been ongoing for roughly two weeks now, during which Arab mobs perpetrated a number of lynches against Jewish civilians, which consequently drew out Jewish mobs who perpetrated lynches of their own against Arab civilians, among other heinous crimes. The focal point of violence is primarily concentrated in the mixed Arab-Jewish city of Lod, where curfew is currently being enforced. Following a tour of the city, Israeli Internal Security Minister Amir Ochana mentioned that he had instructed police to use all tools at their disposal with force to restore public order and quiet to the residents of Lod alongside the rest of the cities of Israel. <laughs> זה גם האופי הפעילות, בהפעלת הכוח יהיו שונים. זו הציפייה שלי במשטרה, זו ההנחיה, ואני מצפה גם לראות את זה בשטח. Meanwhile, in Jerusalem, Greek Foreign Minister Nikos Dendias held a meeting with his Israeli counterpart Gabi Ashkenazi, during which he voiced Athens' condemnation of the firing of thousands of rockets by Hamas against Israel, and emphasized further that Israel, like any country in the world, has the right to self-defense. With that being said, Minister Dendias underscored the need for an immediate ceasefire, as well as the protection of human rights and the safeguarding of human lives. Minister Ashkenazi, for his part, thanked his Greek counterpart for his visit, which he asserted to be a testament to the close relations and solidarity between Greece and Israel. From Jerusalem, the Greek top diplomat traveled to Ramallah for a meeting with Palestinian Authority Prime Minister Mohamed Shtaye, from where he later continued to Israel's eastern neighbor Jordan, where he is holding meetings with his Jordanian counterpart Ayman Safadi. Meanwhile, Jordanian King Abdullah II joined French President Emmanuel Macron and Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi for a meeting via video conference in which deliberations commenced on ways to realize a cessation of hostilities for Israel and the Islamist organizations in the Gaza Strip. Separately in Berlin, German Foreign Minister Heiko Maas reiterated his country's support for Israel's right to self-defense. Seit einer Woche befindet sich Israel nun schon unter massivem Beschuss und wir verurteilen diese Raketenangriffe der Hamas aufs Schärfste Und Israel hat selbstverständlich sich das Recht, sich dagegen zu verteidigen. Die Hamas hat mit ihrem Raketenterror bewusst eine Situation eskaliert, die schon zuvor höchst angespannt gewesen ist. Und das mit schrecklichen Folgen für Israelis und auch für die eigene Zivilbevölkerung in Gaza. While laying full blame on the Islamist Hamas organization, Minister Maas went on to insist that a ceasefire must be instilled as soon as possible and underscored the need, once a ceasefire is implemented, for the European Union to play a role in rehabilitating the terror-plagued enclave. The EU muss hier eine Rolle spielen, politisch wie auch humanitär. Und ich werde mich deshalb heute erstens für eine bessere humanitäre Versorgung in Gaza einsetzen. Und es ist gut, dass Israel heute den seit einer Woche geschlossenen Grenzübergang für den humanitären Warenverkehr nach Gaza geöffnet hat. Und wir stellen für die Zivilbevölkerung im Gazastreifen rund 40 Millionen Euro zur Verfügung. It is important to explain that Israel had indeed opened the Erez and Kerem Shalom border crossings into the Gaza Strip for humanitarian aid to be delivered to the civilian population of the Hamas-controlled territory. However, several hours after the border crossings were opened, Islamist militants launched a barrage of mortar shells on the humanitarian convoys entering the enclave, injuring one IDF soldier. Consequently, the IDF's coordinator of government activities in the territories noted in a statement that the remaining trucks carrying humanitarian goods were prevented from entering the Gaza Strip. Turning to Brussels, where an informal foreign ministerial of the European Union was held, after which foreign policy chief Giuseppe Borrell provided some details from the deliberations 
yet highlighted that there was no cohesive understanding between the 27 member states regarding the situation in Israel and Gaza. As I said, we support the right of defense to Israel and the right to security, also for the Palestinians. And we consider that security for Israel and Palestine requires a true political solution. Because only a true political solution could bring peace. And for doing that, we need to restore a polite political horizon. Turning to Washington, where U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken revealed that the United States is working behind the scenes in an effort to de-escalate the situation between Israel and Hamas. I think um, it's important to note that we are engaged in quiet but very intensive diplomacy uh, in an effort to uh, de-escalate uh, and uh, end the violence and then hopefully uh, move on uh, to um, build something more positive. Secretary Blinken went on to mention that once hostilities are subdued, Washington, together with its global partners, will seek to revive the long-stalled political process aimed at ending the decades-old Israel-Palestinian conflict. Thank you for watching us. I would like to encourage you to join TV7 Israel and me in fervently praying for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel, alongside our prayers for the salvation and peace of Thailand, as well as for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.